Stanford University. We've been seeing big increases in uh, extreme weather disasters. I mean, just in the United States over the last decade, we've had about 70 individual events that have each caused at least a billion dollars in damage. Events like Superstorm Sandy, uh, the current California drought, the heat and drought that happened in the central and eastern U.S. in 2012. We know that these aren't only caused by climate change. And so much of our research is focused on trying to understand these physical hazards. And in particular, have there been changes? We've been interested in looking at uh, the relationship between the atmospheric circulation um, and the extreme hot and cold events that happen uh, at the surface where we live. So one of the interesting things about the methodology that we use in the paper is that we can isolate the contributions of the atmospheric circulation and the changing heat content of the atmosphere. And this, uh, we hope, will facilitate our ability to fingerprint the human influence on this climatic change. And we look at which of those causes is actually driving some of the extreme events. When we look at the areas that have these clear trends, these significant trends in atmospheric patterns, we find that those trends in the atmospheric circulation can indeed explain some of the trend in the hot and cold days at the surface. So based on what we found, uh, we can say that uh, due to the continued accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, uh, the heat content should continue to increase. And we can expect uh, continued increases in extremely hot days and uh, continued decreases in extremely cold days. It's not just that everything's getting warmer. Uh, you know, the atmosphere matters, the ocean matters, the way that they circulate, the, the kinds of patterns that appear that, that give us our heat waves and give us our cold snaps, those still really matter. We know that, that, that global warming is playing an important role uh, just in making everything warmer. And we've shown that in this study, that the largest percentage of um, change in extremely hot days and extremely cold days around the world is from just the, the increasing heat and moisture in the atmosphere that comes with global warming.